Happy New Year, everyone. Well, today I am surrounded by my favorite cleaning chemicals and, of course, the Photobomb Kitty, who had to celebrate the beginning of 2020 with us. You knew this was coming, right? So, when we get back, we are going to talk about cleaning products. And I'm going to tell you about my 10 favorite under $5 cleaning products that are an absolute must-have in every home. And if we have time, I'm going to go into five more special purpose cleaners. See you in a minute. Okay, let me start with the one that is missing from this table, and that is white vinegar. And the reason white vinegar isn't here on the table is because I've used up all of mine and it's on my grocery list for tomorrow. White vinegar is $2.64 a gallon. By the way, I've priced all these things out at Walmart, and because it's a national chain, these prices should be good straight across the country. Oh, scoot, please, please. All right, fine, stay there. I'm not fighting this. White vinegar can do everything from tenderize meat to clean your grungy shower heads. It's a great glass cleaner. And since one of our primary focuses in this channel is old stuff, I'm sure most of you, as I have, have gotten glassware that is just cloudy with old mineral deposits that have accumulated over time, vinegar will get rid of that. If your shower head is blocked up from those mineral deposits, and you can always tell because there's a little crusty white film around the little holes, pop it off, stick it in a bowl of vinegar. And by the way, if you can't manage to pop the shower head off, you just pour your vinegar into a baggie wrap the baggie up around the shower head, tie it off with a rubber band or a twist tie or whatever, kid's string, steal the string from your children, tie it off, come back an hour later, and your shower head should be flowing clear again because vinegar is acidic and it will eat through that crusty buildup like nothing. I used to always keep a quart of vinegar that was labeled coffee maker because that's another thing you can do with vinegar. Brew yourself a pot of vinegar coffee every now and then. It'll clean out your coffee maker. By the way, when I say brew, don't put in coffee grounds. Just run the vinegar through the coffee maker. I would run my vinegar through the coffee maker, let it cool in the carafe, and pour it right back into the bottle and save it for next month. And I could use that until the vinegar got, you know, well, grungy to the point where I didn't want to put it in my coffee maker anymore. Vinegar is one of the best cheap cleaning compounds out there. But if you have a marble countertop, no. Vinegar is acidic. Marble is a soft stone. It can damage it. So other than marble, vinegar, great, wonderful glass cleaner. Next, this is Castile soap. So is this, by the way. Um, this I got from a dollar store in Puerto Rico. I'm sure you're not going to be able to see it, but it's actually got the name of a Spanish dollar store on it. Um, you can get it in a liquid form like this or a bar form. And a bar form can be graded just with your regular household grater and, uh, and soap. So it's not a problem. You know, grate it with your grater, throw it in the sink, you can use this or this to wash everything from your baby's butt to to like to the restroom floor in a New Jersey truck stop. Cleans everything. You can use it as a shampoo. You can wash your hands, your body, your baby, your cat, your cat. We could wash a cat with that. What do you think? You 
but this tail is all over the place here. He's determined to knock over my cotton boy. Actually, what's going on is he wants me to pet him, and this is how he says pet me, and I'm ignoring him, so he's... That tail is very active, and it'll probably get more so the more I ignore him. He'll get very insistent. Great. Great soap. Um, Castile soap. A three four-ounce bars for... $3.28. Again, Walmart pricing. And they'll be larger than this. Grade them up. This should be the backbone of anybody's kitchen cleaning bucket because you can clean anything with this. This is soap. Pure and simple. This particular bottle, uh, I got this from my soap enabler. That's my friend Robin. She knows I like soap. So she sends me these wonderful soaps all the time. Um, liquid soaps, bar soaps here. I've got my soap box right here. And it literally is a soap box. See, I'm not hoarding the soap. It's in a pretty box. It even has a label that says soap. And it is absolutely full. Look at the size of that bar soap. Absolutely full of the soaps that my friend Robin sends me all the time. And, oh, it smells so good. And, of course, as I use the soaps, I take them out. And as I use the soaps, she sends me more. Uh, because, you know, I've got a problem. She's a good friend. She basically supports my Jones. I can't buy friends like that. All right. Um, barkeeper's friend. We've talked about this before. This will take that dishwasher scuzz off Pyrex. I didn't believe it would work. I thought it would scratch up the Pyrex. I thought it would ruin it. But we have a video back in the older video files of Barkeeper's Friend cleaning Pyrex. And in fact, if you'll recall, I used it on a really battered piece of Jocelyn's Pyrex because I was sure it was going to scratch it up, and it did not. So after that test piece, I used it on a good piece, cleaned it up really, really nicely. I use this to clean the bottoms of ceramic and porcelain pieces. That unglazed portion that sits on the palette on the kill when it's fired, we've talked about that, and that can get so grubby. Ah, he's abandoned me. He's not far. He'll be back. And it will just clean that right up. Bottoms of old coffee mugs. But I started using this. They say it doesn't scratch. And in my experience, they're right. It doesn't scratch. It's not a harsh abrasive cleaner. So this one, anything from, you know, scuzzy porcelain to your kitchen sink. Uh, barkeeper's Friend, uh, 21 ounces, $1.93. Super cheap, great bargain. These are two that I use almost interchangeably. Soft scrub, toilet bowl cleaner. Why do I use those? Because they cling. These things are, are viscous and they will cling to a vertical surface. So if I want to clean the sides of something, for example, the inside of a vase or a jar, this is what I use. It's not abrasive, it doesn't scratch, and you get a nice coating on the sides and because it's thick, it will cling to the sides, and you can soak a piece just by wiping the insides, come back an hour later, scrub it off. It should be really nice and clean. My preference is toilet bowl cleaner. Yes, I clean my dishes with toilet bowl cleaner because my complaint about soft scrub, and the reason I'm holding it upside down, is it's very hard to get it out of the bottle. And I, I have to store it upside down just to keep the contents you know, near the cap so that I can actually squeeze it out. But it is a wonderful cleaner. Um, let's see, soft scrub, 48 ounces for 328. Uh, toilet bowl cleaner, 36 ounces for 388. Again, still under $5. 
All right, next up. Bleach. Any brand will do. They're all pretty much the same. Bleach is just indispensable. Um, if you have uh, uh, an, uh, an emergency, uh, your water supply is compromised, you've been through a hurricane, bleach will purify your water. Uh, that's, that's how they purify water in, in pools with chlorine bleach. You don't want to put that much in. Um, if you've got something that is white, uh, for example, your toilet bowl, um, my uh, appliances, a kitchen sink, my bathroom sink, my toilet bowl, they're all white bleach. Um, I will put the plug into the bottom of my kitchen sink and just pour bleach in there to clean out the stains that accumulate over time. Um, bleach is a disinfectant. Uh, I know the fashion for a long time has been bright colorful towels and bright colorful sheets, but you folks have been in my bedroom so you know my sheets are white. So are my towels because they get bleached every time they go into the wash, because bleach will disinfect. Uh, and that's something I like. Also, by the way, if you have white sheets and you don't like the fact that they're kind of dull and colorless, the great thing about white sheets is you can go into vintage thrift shops and antique stores and get wonderful old embroidered pillowcases, which are invariably white, and it will match your sheets and throw some sparkly color and have a wonderful little hand done design. So, um, yes, it helps you. Helps you with your decorating in that sense. Bleach is one of my go-to cleaners because it disinfects. I will just wipe down my countertops with it because after all, you're preparing food there. And if you've ever checked on the amount of germs on the average kitchen countertop, you'd be using bleach too. Okay, bleach's arch enemy, ammonia. This too is a great glass cleaner. Never use bleach and ammonia together. I don't even keep mine in the same cabinet. The bleach goes back with the laundry at the far end. The ammonia stays in the kitchen. Um, in fact, on this table right now is the closest my bleach and ammonia ever come. It's not an exaggeration. Do take this seriously. Never, ever combine bleach and ammonia. The fumes are not just toxic, they're lethal. You can kill yourself with exposure to the, foam, uh, the fumes, and people do this. This is not just some urban legend. So we keep them far apart. Vintage jewelry, nothing cleans up old jewelry like ammonia. Uh, and it'll clean your diamond ring too, so it's not just costume jewelry. It's a fantastic glass cleaner. Um, mold and mildew, of course bleach will clean up mold and mildew too. Remember, never use them together. But this is another must have. Did I give you, I didn't give you the cost on bleach. Two sixty dollars a gallon. Ammonia. Um, a dollar sixteen for half a gallon. Bleach ammonia uh, here. We've talked about this before, and as you can see, this is my own bottle of Dawn. You can tell how well I use this. This is a great dishwashing liquid, but it can also be used on laundry. It will take grease spots out of clothing. You know, you spill the spaghetti sauce, Dawn will take it out. Dawn is my go-to cleaner for most things because it's safe, it's gentle, and it cuts through grease. But this is fantastic. What is our cost on Dawn? 19 ounces for $2.64. Microfiber cloths. Uh, I use them for everything. If you can tell this one is an old one. And as you can see, this has been well used. I use them the way people use paper towels or dish cloths. I pick up spills with them. Um, I wash dishes with them. I get these two for a dollar at Dollar Tree, which means I have a whole bunch of them. 
So I can use it for whatever I want. At the end of the day, I throw it in the wash. It goes in with my wipes and the bleach over here, so it's disinfected because I use it to clean all manner of grungy stuff up, pick stuff up off the floor, etc. Um, microfiber cloths are great because you can clean with them, you can dust with them. They are very absorbent. They don't leave lint behind. They're just really good all around, super cheap cleaning products. And again, we were talking about the uh, germs on your countertop. Uh, according to the U.S. Department of Health, the dirtiest thing in your home is the sponge you use to wash your dishes with. Get some microfiber cloths. When you're done with it, at the end of the day, throw it in the wash. Grab a new one the next morning. Because, trust me, if you had ever seen any breakdown of the kinds of germs that they have found in people's dishcloths, in their sponges, oh yeah, you'd be switching over very quickly. So, microfiber cloths. Ooh, next up. I decided to grab this old one. This is the same toothbrush I used last week when I was uh, getting the uh, furniture polish into the crevices of that carved chair. Toothbrushes are free. You should change your toothbrush every three to four months according to the American Dental Association. And so what are you going to do with the old toothbrush? Throw it in your cleaning bucket. They're small, they have nice stiff bristles, they can get into all kinds of little areas, and as I say, they're free. You have to throw the toothbrush away. Anyway, why not reuse it? And I get my toothbrushes for free from my dentist. Um, I see my dentist at least three times a year. Uh, um, and the reason I do that, by the way, is it wasn't a dentist who came up with the notion of seeing your dentist twice a year. It was a Madison Avenue advertising executive who came up with the slogan of brush twice a day, see your dentist twice a year. It was their advertising slogan. And my dental care is not going to be dependent on a Madison Avenue executive's idea of a catchy jingle. So I see my dentist three times a year, which means I get three toothbrushes a year. And since I use an electric toothbrush, I get three new cleaning toothbrushes a year for free. But even if you have to pay for them, remember, you're going to have to buy the toothbrush anyway. You need to change it out every three to four months. So this is what you do with the old toothbrush. They are wonderful. Um, I, I use toothbrushes to scrub everything. They're small. They get into tiny places. Inside of bottles, vases, great. Um, so, our microfiber cloths were 50 cents a piece at Dollar Tree. Our toothbrushes are free. Next up, Goo Gone. Okay, we've talked about this before. I get Goo Gone in reasonably good sized bottles. Goo Gone is uh, a 16 ounce bottle is $4.97, making it the most expensive of our 10 really cheap necessary household cleaners. This will take adhesive off anything. And I, you've seen me pick labels on thrift store things and it's just, you can't get them off. This is great. You can also use Goo Gone to clean things like furniture because it's an oil-based cleaner. It's really remarkably useful. So this is one you should have. You will find more and more uses for it the longer you keep it. Very cheap, very versatile. So I got all 10 of them into something like 20 minutes, which is great because now I'm going to be able to go on to some special purpose cleaners. These are more expensive, but again, special purpose cleaners. Spot Shop, let me see if I've got a price on that. 14 ounces for $5.14. 
This will take stains out of your carpet or your upholstery. It will take lipstick stains out. It, it, it's just, I'm stunned by the stains this will take out. Uh, crayon marks. If you've got a stain in your carpet or your upholstery, this will get rid of it. You just spray it, blot it, blot, blot until your cloth comes up clean. Fantastic. I'm surprised this isn't more widely known because if you've got fabric in your home, you need this. It can really take care of a lot of problems. Um, metal polish. Brasso, uh, which is the brand I checked, eight ounces for two ninety eight. I checked Brasso because that's the one that the service people use to clean their belt buckles and other things. And of course, they have to pass inspection and get them all nice and shiny. Brass polish, or in this case, it's just a metal polish, brass, copper, all metals, will not only clean metals, but it will take scratches out of plastic. It is an abrasive cleaner. If you want to take scratches out of plastic, you just take your little 50 cent microfiber cloth, put a little brass polish on it, and rub it across your plastic surface. And you can actually see the scratches disappear right before your eyes. It'll polish your, your plastic up nice and smooth. It will work on um, it'll work on bakelite. It'll work on celluloid. All of the old vintage plastics. So if you're going to deal with old plastics, metal polish. If you want to deal with old metals of any sort metal polish and we by the way we've talked about this before some people like a patna on their old metal one man's patna is another man's dirt so that's up to you um, and keep in mind if you take the patna off some old metal stuff it'll return all by itself in about six months if you don't polish it so it's hardly the end of the world but I'm not a big believer in a patina on a metal surface. Um, most of the time when these items were in homes and in use, they were regularly polished. I don't know where old and dirty became fashionable, but not around here. Around here it's just embarrassing. Uh, up next, um, oh, glass cooktop cleaner. This stuff is great on old glass. This is a glass polish. And I use this on the window glass on my schoolhouse. And as most of you know, my schoolhouse is almost 170 years old. And some of that, that glass, I'm very fortunate, some of that glass is almost 170 year, years old too. And the, the most incredible junk can get embedded in glass over time. Sparkling glass. It really, really works. This is something that if you have glass topped furniture, uh, if you want to do something with old window glass, uh, chimney gloves for lamps, there's all kinds of old glass stuff that you can use. You can polish it to a high shine with this. This stuff is incredible. And what is this? Um, glass Glass, glass. You know what? I don't have a price on this. I am assuming it is probably around two ninety eight. Oh, it is two ninety eight. There it is, right next to the metal polish, because they are the same brand. Two ninety eight for ten ounces, and it goes a long, long way. This. This is not so much a cleaner as this is a product that will make your life easier. This is Rain-X Defogger, 12 ounces for $5.40. I don't know about you, but I get out of the shower and I have to go into my bedroom to comb my hair because my mirrors are always completely fogged and then I'm tempted to just wipe it with my hand or the towel or whatever and that just makes it worse. Use this on your mirrors in your bathroom 
once a month and you won't have that problem. I didn't believe it. It really works. Just, it's an interior anti-fog. So, Rinex products in general, by the way, do work. They're really good. Um, if you have a car, make sure you get Rain-X on your windshield. It could save your life because the rain just sheets down and dramatically improves your visibility. So, this one, boy, can this make your life easier in the bathroom. I know it did for mine. The other one that we do not have here, because it's out in the schoolhouse, is a product called Greased Lightning. And Greased Lightning was... Uh, Thirty-two ounces for a dollar ninety-eight. Greased lightning. The reason it's out in the schoolhouse is not something that I use outside of a well-ventilated area. That is the industrial strength grease cutter. You can use that on car parts. This stuff is really, really good. And if you do a lot of cooking. It's probably something that you might want to just, you know, open all the kitchen windows and wipe down the walls and cabinets with it. It's a really good grease cutter. I'm concerned about the fumes, but I have to say I've never found a better grease cutter. So I'm willing to put up with the fumes until somebody comes up with something, and who knows, maybe they will, that has fewer fumes and does a better job. Meanwhile, I'm sticking with Grease Lightning. Really, really good grease cutter. That's what I used to clean the stove behind me when I first got it. And when I first got this thing, it probably had about 80 years worth of grease on it. And out to the schoolhouse with the Grease Lightning, wiped it down. It works beautifully. But again, special purpose cleaner. So... Now, you have heard my 10 must-haves and my 5 G, you know, for special purposes, you should consider these. Um, of all of these, Castile soap is probably the most useful. So if there's one thing I would say, go out and get, if you don't have it already, it's either bar or liquid. Um, there are a lot of brands of this. This is just a very wonderful smelling brand that my friend Robin got me. Uh, Dr. Bronner's is a very well-known brand. Oh, and by the way, if you want to be entertained while you're doing your house cleaning, definitely get Dr. Bronner's because Dr. Bronner was a great soap maker, but he was a very unusual man and he printed his bizarre life philosophy all over his soap bottles. Um, uh, to be fair, the man lost his entire family in the Holocaust, and he was, in fact, committed to a, a mental asylum for a while. He escaped. Apparently, you know, he was crazy enough to be in there, but smart enough to sort of sneak his way out. But, yeah, he it's this bizarre, very idiosyncratic worldview all over his soap bottles. It's worth it. Just, just to be able to read it, his strange views. Um, and, whoa, we, we haven't done, let's do a word of the day. How about idiosyncratic, seeing as we're talking about Dr. Brock? Um, idiosyncratic, it comes from idiosyncrasy, it's Greek. And it's two words, it's a combination of two words. So, uh, idios, which is... Uh, own or it's something personal, private, own in that in the personal sense. And crassus, which is a mixture. So idiosyncratic very literally is your own personal mixture of weirdness. And I have to say, if I lost my whole family in the Holocaust and was committed to a mental asylum and had to sort of sneak my way out the back door when nobody was looking. I would probably be writing my worldview all over a bottle of soap, too. So I'm not going to criticize. Uh, you know, not, I don't feel like throwing stones at anyone today. So that is our 10 great under $5 cleaning products with a bonus 
of five others that I bet you'd find very useful if you gave them a try. So, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.